and welcome to Life is Spiritual Presents Real Life Testimonies. My name is Baba Zion, and as usual, I'm here with my beautiful wife, Erica. Erica Mukisakimani, <laughs> a.k.a. Mama Maisha, or Mami Zion and Zef. Amen, amen. And today we have a beautiful guest yes. that we are so pleased to have with us, and she would like to share her testimony. Yeah. And we thank God for the opportunity. Yes, and we will allow her to introduce herself. But guests, she looks like my mom. I've been telling her, and I just want you to let me know if what I'm seeing is correct. But without diverting the topic, let's allow her share her testimony. Mm. Yes, Mama, you're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you. Yes. yes. Tim and Eric. Yeah. Yes. You're so loving. My names are Mwonge Jen Brenda. I'm married a mother of many children. Wow. Um, yes, let's start with a word of prayer. Yes, I just absolutely. want to know more about Mama Bat. Yeah. I need to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give thanks for the gift of life and for the gift of righteousness that we have obtained by faith in Yeshua, whom you sent to be a propitiation for us. And because of that freedom, we are now able to share our stories that others may be encouraged, edified, delivered, saved, convicted if need be, rescued, healed, resurrected if their faith life, if their prayer life is dead, that it may be restored. Father, we pray that the Holy Spirit be the administrator of this broadcast. We pray that every soul under the sound of my voice may be covered by the blood of Yeshua, spirit, soul, and body. And now we commit the sharing of this testimony unto you, that Yeshua may be glorified, the body of Christ may be edified, and that your will may be done. For it is in Yeshua's name we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. Yes. Glory to God. So, Mama, just continue with uh, your testimony. Yeah. Yeah. I come from the Catholic background. Mm. My dad and my mom were staunch Catholic, but from a polygamous family. Hey. And I thank God that I'm here to testify the goodness of the Lord. Um, when I was 12 years, my dad and mom separated. And because it was a polygamous family, I had another mom. So, according to how polygamous homes behave, life was not really well. And it was like the beginning of my hardest life. I used to sing in church and I used to pray the rosary and I was a good choir member and I was promoted to many positions because of music and drama. Time came when I developed a sickness right from my boarding section. When I could sleep, things came and sat on my bed. And even you could not see them, but you can hear the huge things sitting on your bed. But when they sit, you feel powerless. Mm. No energy, nothing. What I knew, I didn't know about Jesus, but you knew about the rosary. Uh -huh. I could pray, but nothing could. But when they said I couldn't speak anything. You would pray the rosary? Yes. Because that's where I came the, the whole Hail Mary full of grace. Yeah. And you would hold the beads. The beads. And count them. One by one. There were ten. But I'm around fifty. So nothing came out. Nothing would happen. They, the nothing. demons would not leave when you, when you counted the rosary and nothing, you prayed the rosary. Nothing. I could feel powerless. 
I couldn't speak. But one thing, what I know that law saved me, they couldn't stangle me and they couldn't touch my body as others have suffered. That is how God knew me, although I didn't know him. Wow. Actually, I remember when it comes to night time, I could really cry. I wanted to share such things, but nobody could give me an answer. Because I was not given a platform to talk or to share my feelings. So that's why these days I have to allow my children to, say, to share how they feel. Yeah. I could cry, but nobody tampered to care. It took time. Even if when I went to boarding school, I was attacked. Sometimes with different nightmares. You could find yourself being taken to the grave. You could find yourself sitting around dead bodies. But how can you talk? And where I was in the secondary section, it was a Protestant school whereby you could not talk a lot. So life went on. I was not happy. It was hardly for me to smile for what was going into my life. So time came when I reached senior four. It worsened. I had a chronic headache. And I was feeling, feeling much pain. Senior four, is it about what age? How old? Um, I was, because I went, S1 was 13, I think I was 15. Which, 15 yeah, years old. 15 okay. years. Okay. I became anemic. And being like a woman, time came that I couldn't produce any blood out of my body. I became brown. And my director was somehow worried with a matron. What they did first, they took me to a nearby clinic, not to check my temperature, but to, to check whether I'm pregnant or I have aborted. But the doctor said, this is a pure girl. Mm -hmm. So time went on, then I was taken home. I was taken to the doctors. They checked, they checked, but nothing stopped. By God's mercies, I completed my class. But I didn't perform well as I used to be. This was the beginning of my torture. Because I was loved by my dad, though there were challenges which I cannot explain more, my dad took me, he was ad advised by his friend that don't lose this girl because in the family we are so many, but I was the best girl who had gone beyond secondary section. So I was taken to the witch doctor. This was my first time. I've never been there. So by the time we reached the witch doctor, he said, oh, what a beautiful girl. And he said, now we have to slaughter a cow. I thought that they are going to bring a whole cow, not knowing that the cow which they meant was a frog. I don't know how they slaughtered it because time came when I was not, I lost my senses. So I just found that my feet were full of blood. Who Nothing took you, to who, say. Who took you to this shrine? It was your, your dad. My dad. Ah, and he's a Catholic. A Catholic. Ah. And it was my first time. I remember they called my mom. My mom stayed at home. She refused to come. Oh. I was taken by his friend. So there were two men, my dad and his friend. And I, I sat in the middle. Okay. Things were not okay. I had voices. And 
I almost wanted to run and I fell in the chest of daddy's friend. He told me, don't be fearful. Stay alert. They could talk different voices. They could play the drums. But time came that I didn't know what was going on. I knew I was going to die. I think we spent there three days. We came back home. They told dad many things. Whereby some of them I didn't understand. Then I came back home. And they were happy knowing that now I'm healed. Not knowing that is the beginning of my suffering. So when you woke up and found blood, what had happened? They had slaughtered the frog? Yes. They had slaughtered a frog. The frog. I don't know how many frogs because there were quite a lot of blood mm. on my feet. They had put the blood on your feet? Yes. Okay. So With uh, some words you were saying, but time came that I lost my senses. Yeah, it was a big shrine. How did this shrine look? It was like a, a mud hut or was it a, a building or was it a temple? Um, it was like a mud hut because he was a rich man. He had some things he could use. Mm hmm not to show that it is a shrine. Yeah. Uh -huh. But what I knew, there were some things around and some fences, not those these wall fences, but they are like, we call them rings and molly. Like reeds. Reed, yeah. Reeds? Yes. Reeds. Uh -huh. yeah. And there are quite a lot of people seated. But because my dad was rich, was given a special place. So that's where we stayed. And he gave us some days to come back. When I reached home, I started re receiving different dreams, almost fearful. So I could fear sleeping alone in my room. And some voices could speak at night, which I don't know. But I had to keep quiet because I was not able to talk at home to share according to the life I was going through. I could, in short, I could say that my feelings were numbed. And I could not tell what happened in the shrine. You just have to keep quiet because this is a big family. You don't want, you are not, you're never allowed to say anything about it that you are going to the shrine. But what I saw, the second time they took like a sheep and other things, we used to, they could drive at night, not during daytime. Mm -hmm. The devil is a liar. To hide. <laughs> yeah, to hide anything. Their activities. And you don't talk, you don't share to your friends, you have to keep quiet. So the second time I was taken, he took a lot of money. It was the same. And this time, he said, let this girl come alone. So the way I feared, I told my dad, I told my dad, I think I could go with my young sister. We went and this man took me to a certain place and started cutting all over my things, my all these palms, my body behind, and cutting. yeah, cutting. And he took me to the shrine and said he's going to remove those things which are like walking in my body. But could I see anything? He comes, you feel the pain, nothing to say. You don't cry. And when it is finished, he told us that when you go back, don't look behind. Go straight, get a vehicle, but don't look behind. 
I don't know whether I fulfilled it because we are in fear. We had to walk. But from that day, things worsened. I think he did a lot of things to enter my body. I wasn't peaceful. I could go and sing in the choir because by that time, I went to stay with my mom. But before I went to stay with my mom, he was refusing me, but he allowed me because I wanted to do a course. Right now it was one evening. The pain worsened and I almost felt life like running mad. The way I could sleep, not in the normal way like a person. You can sleep here, you put the feet here, but the head needs to be down. That's how I could find my life. It was worse. My brother whom I followed came. Nothing to do and nothing to say. I mean, the only way you could sleep was by putting your head down and putting your feet. Yes, here. And you put the head down. That's the way you can find life. <laughs> that was the only way you could get some rest. Yes. It was the only way you could feel some relief. Exactly. Wow. So my brother could not do anything. He just looked at me. And I know he sent some messages whereby all neighbors, because my mom was in Kampala and it was far off in the village where we were, that you'll find that your daughter is dead any time. She couldn't manage to come because the way, when the pain comes, even my eyes can change to red. I could cry, you can feel the pain, but nothing. And I had, I saw my dad lamenting that he has paid a lot of money. But where I was, nobody could reach my dad and tell that Jane is dying. But I was there on the veranda and my mom, I could not tell her like a stepmom, my second mom, was there seated in the kitchen. Everybody was staring at me. The way I felt that I was almost losing my last breath, the God started. Is it crying? God's cry? They may reproduce the sound. The, the what? The goats. The goats. Yes. Okay, so they started. They made a sound. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. started maying. Okay. Bitterly. It was so strongly, I don't know. We had some workers at home who were working in our gardens. So they sat because my dad had a big plantation of matoki and coffee. He was among us the best, best growers in the district. So the porters were sitting around and the goat was doing funny things when it was like maying. The way it was rotating his head, and here I was almost dying. Then the way when I just lifted my head up, the goat died. So these men went, because they put said, let us slaughter the goat, but no blood came out. Instead of me dying, the goat died. But my dad was puzzled. I remember he took me in another room to sleep. When he took me, something came at night and fell off on the floor because the house was cemented, cemented. And it made a loud noise. For me, by that time, I was weak. I couldn't move. So my dad came out of his room because his bedroom was different from was separated from my mother's bedroom so he came out and say Jane what's wrong why are you yelling I said no dad I haven't yes I heard you yelling and something fell up in a strong way are you okay he went and looked at the lockers on the door and the door was firm 
He sat. He was puzzled. I remember one day he carried me on the back, silently outside, knowing that might be I'm not going to leave. And I haven't talked about my birth. Mm. When I was, that's how mom told me before she died. She told me when they gave birth, when I came right from the womb, they thought that I'm not going to leave. I don't know why. And they gave me an, one name, which shows that I'm not going to leave. So I think this gave the demons a legal ground, uh -huh. knowing that I'm not going to leave. So time came that almost my dad gave up. Today I'm okay, tomorrow I'm like this. Today I'm okay. So things changed like that. Then I told dad, there are some things happened. Then I told dad, I should go and visit mom. I don't know how he said, okay, you can. And I went. When I reached at mommy's place, hey, I started singing in the choir. One of the choirs in Kampala, Catholic choirs. I could sing. I could go to church early in the morning at six, straight in the church, praying, kneeling before Hail Mary. So that's why I was promoted. I could sing. I could conduct the choir. But my life was not okay. Sometimes I could cry. So one day mom told me, where dad stopped, I'll begin. Then she was told, in Kampala there is a big man who can work upon your daughter. And when I talk about this, there's certain anger, not a, but which comes inside. Um. After prayer, conducting the music and kneeling before, I was kneeling before that idol. Mm -hmm. Then someone came and told me, my mom, to, your mom told me that we should go to Kansanga. I said, yeah, yes. We have to go. She was a lady. Then I told her, where am I going to be taken? You're going to be taken to a certain doctor who is going to work upon you. I couldn't resist because I knew nothing about Christ. Mm -hmm. Because I just wanted to have a good life. We went. And this man could talk and talk and talk. Then the second time we went, oh, I don't know what happened because they had negotiations with the other lady. Because I was mature enough. Then they talked and he brought, he wrote some things, he put in water, everything. Then lastly, he said, one day you'll have, you'll have to come back. Now, this medicine I'm going to give you, you have to bath yourself, you have to do this. And I obeyed, and he has commanded. Mm -hmm. Time went on. With my singing, promotions, and the youth, but no life at all. So, after my course, I first took mechanized accounting, and accounts in banking, and I passed on very well. So when I shared about this, I feel like, oh, Lord, I wish I knew you earlier. Mm -hmm. So when I was taken, I did the course. I passed very well, because sometimes when they, the, the tutor was not around, I could help my friends, and I, I was social. 
So when I went to interviews, because I did banking, I could go to the banks. I passed the interviews very well. But when you go the next day for the appointment later, things could change. It was different. By that time, there was cooperative bank. There was commercial bank. There was Bank of Uganda, if right now. The last bank I went was Bank of Uganda. And when you went, you go, you are given the interview. You can sit and they say, yes, you have passed. The next day, to go and get the appointment later, <laughs> you can receive other things you are forced to do, which I refused, although I wasn't saved. What so, are the things? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What are you, you were forced okay. to do other Wanted things? Yeah, some bosses can want to take advantage of your body. Oh, And okay. you know yourself. Yes. And you just say no. Yeah. Mm. Then, it took long. Many offices. But what I know, somewhere, somehow, after finishing my course, someone took my certificate and say, yes, you have finished. It's okay. Now you are proud. That was the end. We could loiter here and there. So to make the long story short, we went back to the other, which doctor they trusted. Then he told me, okay, can you show me your Later, your certificate, I said me, oh, you will never get a job. It has a lot of curses. Someone cast your life. You'll never be okay. And I was really... Weekend, I felt so bad, but I don't know why my mom didn't go with me. But this friend of hers, has, she trusted. Then the last thing they told me, they have to bring a cock. And it had its colors, he had the colors he wanted. And said... So he was specific? Yes. Bring a cock, this yeah. color? And the color... And he said, chicken. and this one, you never thought that, that it's a shrine. It was a room, nice one. You can sit here, you can sit there. It doesn't put on a back cloth. Just reason, reasonable dresses as you, casual. That one I remember. And he told me, I'm going to take you somewhere. Then I'll do something. You just sit. I want to shame the devil when I share these things. Amen. I sat and he slaughtered. He told me, get off your clothes. I was feeling shame. I said, no, you need to be healed. Then I get off my clothes during that time. And he slaughtered the, co the, 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 what? Chicken. The, the cock, the cock mm -hmm. on my head. And by that time, I was no longer in my senses when he was slaughtering. I don't know how he did, but just seeing blood coming on my body. I don't know how I dressed. Or someone else come and dressed me. Then he said, Now, young lady, they should take you back home. Without washing that blood. But I don't know what type of clothes they put me on. But what I know, 
I found myself being driven back home. All right. So my mom was didn't show any sign of surprise, thinking that I'm going to get healed. You know, the devil can stop a bit and you think that you are okay. healed. You're mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. I went on with my singing and I did a lot of drama. Then mom told me, now, because you have failed to get a job because I was open to my mom. Now, I'll get another course for you so that you'll be okay. That that college was College of Business was attached to Mobs Nakawa. Because I was living in Chibuya because of transport, I had to stay this way because it was, it was attached. I didn't want it to be a secretary, but I was forced to do so. Mm -hmm. Because according to the report, she found on that certificate, she decided that I should take another course. I did it well, and I took a course called stenography, mm -hmm. like training you do, like even shorthand course. But I was like you staggering in life. I used to hate myself. And one day I asked my mom that why did you bring me on earth? Because I'm not happy. I could sing. We could dance. One of the ceremonies at the church, because I could dance our Kiganda dance, I could dance with those fathers. We could do everything, but no peace at all. When it comes to night time, I know what is happening, going to happen. But I thank God who preserved my body. You can get fearful nightmares. Sometimes like flying. They want to attack you, then you fly. The best way, not knowing that. I was initiated to other demons. Yeah. Time came, it was rough, and I was going to be taken away. They prayed, they took me somewhere. You can take me, you can tell me there's those waters, not from Namgongo, there was another one, Mataya was near like mango site they could bring water and you take you drink you bath but remember i had other waters also to wash so no joy at all you reach a time whereby some people are laughing and for you you find yourself like being gloomy withdrawing yourself you can, like, here in salvation, you can withdraw like meditating. But for you, your life is like being taken. Don't feel the joy of the Lord. And I hated salvation. There were crusades. I couldn't go. I hated salvation. But God is good. Time came then I want to stay with, I went to stay with my auntie in Intinda because we are staying near the barracks and those army men were raping girls and I was now I was big. We are grown up big. So mommy decided to take me to my auntie. Where I was, I completed my studies and I fell now. I have a new life to enjoy, but nothing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this lady tried to talk to me. And I remember the Catholics of this time can hold the Bibles 
But for us, we are not allowed to touch the Bible by that time. Ah. Even in my secondary section, I was fearful because I was in an Anglican background school, talking, reading the Bible. But I was doing RAE. And my principal, I'll never forget, when I was coming for my certificate, completion of S4, he prayed for me. He said, one day you'll know Jesus. And I did like this and laughed. <laughs> so life went on. Not until one day, I was like in being introduced to some organization. I was coming up, playing the drum, playing the music, going home, coming on, and I have some things which I will not share. But I will share my coming to Christ. That day, I was in the house and I felt that it was like a voice that you need to get saved. And I just kept quiet for some days. And time came, the sickness worsened. Mommy, I told mom, now, what, what to do? I've taken me to hospital, nothing. I've done this and this, nothing. Maybe let me die. Mm -hmm. Then, I don't know how she got these saved people to come and pray for me. The first time they prayed for me, I had to break my rosary. Because every time I was wearing it, I broke it in two pieces. Wow. They prayed and I said, it's okay. But getting saved, saying that I'm saved, is quick. But changing mm -hmm. takes time. Yes. I could escape and go to church. <laughs> where, like singing. And moreover, I was developing of a habit of taking some drinks. But good enough of drinking these beers. Mm -hmm. Bell beer and our breweries, those ones. Then I skipped and I took a bottle. So when I came back home, I was somehow drunk. And mommy told me, you told me you got saved. Okay, on the time I said, mommy, I've got saved, mommy cried, thinking that I'm going to die. I thought that she would be happy. <sighs> but she cried. And when I took the beer, I think she was excited. Knowing that I'm going back. To be a Catholic again. Yes. <laughs> she didn't complain at all. So, coming, one day I found myself sitting in the church, playing the organ. One person was, we are, we are in the music competition, but preparing ourselves with other from um, there is a church, not all saints, but it is a Catholic church. When you're on Kampala, Ginger Road, it's up there. I've forgotten the name. With those from Rubaga. So we are a big choir. Then my, and my eyes turned blind. I couldn't see anything. Oh. And this musician was very strict, but he couldn't see that I'm not. Seeing anything. Out of there, when I went out, going back home, I had a dream. God showed me three places. Catholic Church, Protestant Church, and thus like a Muslim church, and a place where, this was not like a church, where people were coming and singing these hymns. And these churches were having some things coming out. Like lights? Not lights, like flies. Flies? Yeah. Insects? The, the fly, yeah, uh -huh. flying out uh -huh. from the buildings. Then this one, which didn't have any sign, there was a big light and people were 
singing come again and I said Lord what does it mean and inside me like the hospital this is the right church you have to go to so there was war so I had to change I had to go back to the village so when I went back to the village because of war by that time my life was before I got saved mm. I had two little girls I think that the second one I was pregnant that's how I gave my life to Jesus then I went back home the the when I got pregnant nobody was caring but getting saved it was a real battle in the family for them what they did they like withdrew from me mm -hmm. and i was almost alone and i was not known like someone in the family even my brothers so i was there moving around but nothing would i sit in a meeting and say something that's how they did good enough I remember I prayed, Lord, this time now I've known you. That's why I'm here in the village where my dad is. I think the devil did it for a purpose. Because of all time I was getting some of those dreams, being tapped, being disturbed. Then that's how I went to a church where I was prayed for. After prayer, I started being discipled but i had a pastor who really prayed for me that those demons had to to go mm -hmm. right from there i began a new life i began a new life i got a job and i was a good secretary of my boss and good enough my boss was a christian so that's how life moved very well but inside me i remained with bitterness and unforgiveness of the things i was going through because i remember someone came and told my mother when before getting saved that i want to take that lady to america for further studies and what by the time he came he found me when my eyes were red and i was changed and that was the end oh no yeah good enough i joined the dts youth with a mission there i was taught about forgiveness forgiveness is a key to healing <laughs> yes when i forgive things changed mm -hmm. my life changed then i started to insert intercede for my family at home and when i went back home i don't know something happened then my dad before sorry to go back a bit it's okay i lost my young sister she was beaten by a dog and the dog had ant rabies oh she died while barking but the things to she told mom on her deathbed she was telling her mom if you don't get saved you are going to die it wasn't a dog but there's some demons which entered the dog yes. and the dog beat me i'm dying but tell all my family to get saved mm -hmm. and this was a young sister i had just told but for her she was stronger than me mm -hmm. so after that 
I remember one day, I don't know what happened at home. Then my dad said, I'm going to give a land to these saved people. According, he was a huge man. People thought, my brother, I thought, I, what next? Because I could pray for my brothers and they, my, some of them could mock. But good enough, my brothers came to the Lord in a miraculous way. So he said, this part of land, it was up because he had big land. He's going, you can take it and take a part for the Christians, for the saved people. That's how he said. <laughs> and we are surprised because at first he was not an easy man. Mm. But my brother kept that. Then, from that day onwards, I think there was a chain was, which was broken at home because my brothers got saved miraculously and life began. And what I remember, when my mom was dying, she gave her life to Jesus on her deathbed. Wow. But during burial, we said that, okay, we are taking over because now three of us were saved. 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 <laughs> and we said, Mom said, you are not going to bury me in a Catholic way. And we accepted. And she came from a rich family. They were taking her body to be buried the somewhere way. else in the Catholic. But we refused. Even the other brothers refused. And that very night, they had to speak many words. This one, mm -hmm. they used to call me, had an, an, uh, she's the one who enticed the uncles, our sister, even the villagers. They could speak, but you couldn't say anything. For us, we are happy that our mom surrendered her life to Jesus. To Jesus. Amen. My dad, I never knew because he died of hypertension. By the time he was admitted to Nsambia Hospital, he was calling us. I don't know what he was going to say. By the time I reached the gate, my daddy died. So from now onwards, I don't know. But what I knew, my mom got saved. Then salvation began at home. Slowly by slowly, but there are a lot of trials, mm. as I said, that some of the things, I will not talk about them, but there are a lot of trials, mm -hmm. not until many of them got saved. The church is there, and it is growing now mm -hmm. in the village, which doctors are getting saved. Wow. And the, recently there was a wedding and this man who was almost becoming a witch doctor was doing, doing a lot of it. He wasn't a witch doctor, but what he was doing was not good. God saved and put his life and his marriage right. And a lot of testimonies, many pastors from Kampala got the village because right now, my brother is a pastor. Okay, there was a pastor at first, but mm. things changed. Now he's the pastor, and they are coming straight there. Yes, we wanted to study, but we are stopped somewhere because of money. Mm -hmm. But I knew my, my, my dad had money. That's what I knew. Mm -hmm. But the children... We have brought up. Many of them have graduated. They have graduated, but they are Christians. They gave their lives to Jesus. And God gave me a good husband. He's a prayerful man. Amen. 
So when I, the devil never stops. <laughs> he find ways to disrupt you from where you are going. <laughs> In my marriage, we were dead well. But time came when our last born developed a sickness. It was a brain tumor. But through prayer, I realized that where the clinic I gave birth to my child was this midwife entered the account. And by that time, I think when I was giving birth, birth I was almost dying. dying. So my child was well. He was okay. He was a brown boy. Mm -hmm. By time came when he was four years, he started developing a sickness. We went to some consultant, psychiatrist, but the things never stopped. Amid that, I'll share short by short. Then my husband had an accident and he broke this hip joint whereby he was given a patch. So things went on. Also, I had other battles to fight. Mm -hmm. Some of were on the land. Your dad knows that testimony. Was my, they had a good time. We faced it rough. Mm -hmm. Almost our lives was going. By the time this man was not a far, far, far off neighbor, he was making his chance. Things came to me in the dream, and I could dream someone sacrificing. I could dream dead bodies. I could dream. I had to pray. We had to pray. One time, this man came to our compound and said, "You people, you are witches." I said, "Out of nothing." So my husband was bold enough. He said, "Oh, good enough. We have discovered our enemy." Mm -hmm. But through prayer and fasting, the Lord helped us. Our enemy, both enemies, left. One had a house, but we just saw some writings on his house that the bank has confiscated it. The other left, we just heard that he died. But we didn't pray for death. Mm -hmm. But God fought for la for us. Then I meant like my husband is now using three legs. My son is now suffering with this. But sometimes he could tell us some things, what he has dreamed. We prayed. He was operated in India. And my husband was also given another hip joint. But we have really prayed. I can't share anything so much we have gone through. But with prayer, you finish this and something comes. And some people could just say, maybe you have backslidden from the Lord. You know, such things. So when my son was going through such trials, people used to come to me. We know you are saved. Crying crocodile tears. Now, leave us so that we take your son to these Muslim people so that they can do something and your son can be healed. <laughs> oh, we bring some medicine so that we can give to your son so that he can be healed. We stood. Mm -hmm. We said our God is able. If he dies and dies in Christ, it's okay. Many people prayed for us. And the last test which came, not the last because we are still, he came into coma. It was hard. But what I discovered, when you have a prayerful body, the body of Christ, mm -hmm. you are able to win. People gave up. 
but I never go up. Through confession, we can't lose. I said, yes, I know he will come back even through tears. I know he is coming back to life. We traveled, he was taken to Kampala. You will mm -hmm. never know that when a doctor says that it is just a pinch of his life remaining, wow. how can you fail? But we have to believe a report from God. Um. I don't know how it came that my son's life came back. When to went, was taken to India, they said three things. He will be paralyzed or he will never speak again because where the tumor is, it is a dangerous thing or death. As a mother, I couldn't board a plane to go. But the father, being a prayerful man, he went with his son and he remained in prayer. God spoke to us. He gave us Psalms 121 and he gave us Psalms 20. So by the time he was operated, God was with him. Now my son is walking. He's speaking. Wow. He loves the Lord. Um. He took electrical instrument. Mm -hmm. Because of the brains, they told him not to go for father. Like, mm -hmm. But he went for a course. And hands on, he's okay. Mm -hmm. He loves God. He can preach. Right now, he's doing a discipleship school in Ginger. To um. God. Amen. Um, uh, many people have uh, contacted me, people who are facing challenges in terms of health. Yeah. Um, the, especially people who have been told by the doctors that they have hepatitis, HIV, uh, cancer, and those uh, illnesses that are incurable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't know if I'm asking for much. I had the mm -hmm. version of how God healed uh, one of, if it's okay with you, somebody that is close to you, God healed him of cancer. And, and uh, I know somebody out there who is having cancer may really want to, to hear from somebody who, who overcame and also get encouraged. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. My husband was diagnosed cancer. He went through it. It wasn't easy. He did chemotherapy mm -hmm. and he went for radiography. Everything. But, you know, God works in different ways. What I advise people, they have to go and do the tests themselves. Yes. And from there, you can go and see the doctor. It is not, Sorry. it's not bad. Mm. Because God's ways are different from man's ways. He went through it and came back. When he came back, he was told to go every month to do other tests. He did them. But we prayed. One thing and say, nothing is impossible with prayer. Yeah. Nothing is impossible with God. Mm. You have to give in your heart and you have to believe. You have to have faith. People can say, I don't remember, they can say that even a prayerful man can be cancerous. Can we can receive cancer? Yes, we are in a human bodies. Yeah. Anything can come, can test you. But the last time he went, they said, now you are free. Glory to God. Glory to God. No cancer. Glory to God. Oh wow. my God. And Mama is a children minister. Uh, for those of you who are seeing her for the first time, she's a children minister. But I want her to explain to us what inspired her to to go into that ministry. It's, a, it's not an easy ministry. I, I, 
I personally am not a children minister because I don't know what to tell children. I don't know what they are thinking and mm. and you know how they do their things. Sometimes they are beyond me. So, ah, mama, <laughs> explain to us. Thank you very much, Eric. Mm. So, I'm a children's minister, but also it comes from the family ministry school which I did after my DTS. Yes, I did it like in 2005. Yeah. But what touched most is about parenting. Parenting touched me most. Right now, I can minister to ladies. And sometimes you can find me in marriage ministries. Yeah. But with children, I love it so much. Parenting. Mm -hmm. Listening to our children. Nobody listened to me, mm -hmm. even my biological. She had no time. Mm -hmm. And also having time with your children, allowing your children to talk. Because remember, I passed through difficult things. I wish they could, they would have listened, listen you, but, but nobody should listen to you. And you have this culture, the Ganda culture whereby you are not allowed to express your feelings. That You tell your mama that, that I'm feeling angry. Why? It is not good. Mm -hmm. So children have been tortured. They have been like facing difficult things. Some are raped, but they cannot say anything. So after hearing this, after going through this, I identified it to my background. So that's why I joined the children ministry. But I begin with the families mm -hmm. because I have to talk with the parents also. And the next thing, what we are doing also we are doing like a little counseling session with children, traumatized. Also, when we go to the camps, even in our communities, when you hear the story, you don't sit and say, no, this is not my ministry. No, you have to go oh. to all it and move on. And I've done this celebrating children there's quite a load and it is wide. That's why I encourage your dad to do it also. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Hey. When we read about Nimrod and the Tower of Babel, well, they were the first pagans. And uh, Nimrod was the first to build, you know, one of the first to build a city. And he was mighty, they say, before the Lord of hosts, but he was not a servant of the Lord. He was a pagan. He was an idolater. He, he made himself to be a god. And his, uh, and his own mother, Semiramis, to be a goddess. And somehow he became, in the origin of idolatry, is that Nimrod became the sun god. And his mother, or his wife, uh, Semiramis, was the goddess. The moon goddess. And their offspring was Tammuz. Tammuz was now their son. And so this same religion has been practiced throughout the ages. You come to Egypt, you see the same gods being worshipped. It was Osiris, now who is Nimrod. It is Isis, who is Semiramis. Semiramis. And then, then Horus, who is the son Tammuz. So this th these three have been traveling you know, through the ages... From empire to empire, you see these same three uh, figures as idols. And these three represented the very same idols, the pagan idols, that God was always warning the children of Israel about. He was telling them, you shall not have any other gods before me. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. So... They would practice 
idolatry. Sometimes the children of Israel would practice the same idolatry as the Canaanites or the Amalekites, the very things that God warned them not to practice. And in Jeremiah chapter 7, we see that Jeremiah is, is being told by the Lord, he's saying in verse 16, he says, Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor prayer for them, neither make intercession to me, for I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? They gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire, and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven. I want you to mark that, the queen of heaven, because that's the same goddess that they were calling Semiramis in the days of Nimrod. So according to the Babylonians, the, their trinity of their godhead was Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz. In Egypt, it was Osiris and Isis and, and uh, their son, Horus. This same Isis, the mother goddess, She's the same queen of heaven whom God is warning and complaining to through Jeremiah about to the children of Israel, warning them, stop worshiping, stop, you know, making cakes unto the queen of heaven, stop offering incense unto the queen of heaven, stop worshiping this goddess. This goddess has traveled down through the ages. And even in Greece, she still had the same, they have the same trinity, unholy trinity with Zeus. And uh, they, called her, they called her name Artemis. And, and, and the son, they, 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 they had several different names for him, but they also had an unholy trinity. And you come down to Rome and you see that the Roman church cleverly disguised the same unholy trinity but wrapped it with christian wrappings christian a veneer of christianity but it is the same goddess that is being worshipped the same queen of heaven now they gave her a name mary and that's why you're finding many catholics thinking that they're christians praying to who to mary the same Mary who is the queen of heaven. They call her the mother of God, the queen of heaven, the same one that, that God was telling Jeremiah to tell the children of Israel to stop worshiping the queen of heaven. Stop worshiping the so-called mother of God. Stop it because it is idolatry and it cannot set them free. It only puts them in bondage. But they... They felt that they would not do it. They, would, they refused. The children of Israel actually refused to stop worshiping the idol, the queen of heaven. And what happened? They ended up going into bondage. Yeah. That's how they ended up going. And where did they go? Into Babylon. To, <laughs> into bondage. Every time you are involved in idolatry, the result will be slavery. It will be sickness and disease. Yep. Your peace will go. The demonic oppression will be definite. It will be nonstop. And so what the Catholic Church did was they just gave the same idols, the same ones that, that they were worshiping in Babylon, Nimrod and Samiramis, the wife, and Tammuz. Now they have what they call the father in, in the Catholic Church. They have, mm -hmm. they call, they have their own father. Mm -hmm. Then they have, uh, instead of Semiramis or Isis, they have now called her Mary, the mother of God. And then instead of Tammuz or instead of Horus, as in Egypt, they now call him Jesus, the son of God. So you see there's, there is an unholy trinity in the Catholic Church, a different father, a different son, and, a different, and, and, the, and the queen mother, the mother of, mother of God or queen mother of earth. That is an unholy trinity. It's a different Jesus. It's a different father. And it's a completely different idol, an, an idol that has nothing to do with the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, 1 Timothy 2.5 says, There is one God and one Father of us all, and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. is the only mediator. So we don't need somebody else to speak to the Father on our behalf. We have Yeshua. He's the only mediator that is needed. But the Catholic Church cleverly, what Satan did was to craft a religion that had a semblance of the followership of Christ and replace the names 
of the god the old gods that they were worshiping with christian names now these gods these gods now have christian names so if you are following jesus which jesus are you following are you following yeshua the hebrew yeshua who came to the children of israel and died for the sins of man he never gave any instruction that anyone should pray to his mother and after she had him yes when she got pregnant with yeshua she was a virgin but after she had him she had other he has brothers and sisters at least four other brothers so she's definitely she was definitely not a virgin again after she gave birth to yeshua yeah. so she is not a virgin perpetually <laughs> because that's what they claim in the catholic church they claim that mary the mother of god the mary, so, so called mother of god is a perpetual virgin that she she remained a virgin the entire time even after she had yeshua she remained a virgin that means she did not marry she did not have other children yet we have it in scripture that joseph was her husband and that she had other children with joseph so there are definite lies that this cult called catholicism is binding people with and so to unbind them from those forms those strongholds of bondage is difficult but i know with the gospel of christ and the gospel of the kingdom of god when it is preached correctly and taught correctly and the idols of babylon are exposed and they see the same idols being practiced if you look around the vatican you can see idol after idol you are you seeing naked men they are stripped naked statues of naked men in in the vatican and just abomination after abomination as you as you look inside the um there's a church that the just there at the vatican it is in the head is it is it's in the shape of a serpent complete with the venomous teeth at the front and the pope is sitting in between the teeth and you and you can see it and and the eyes that the two eyes of the serpent on both sides of this building in the shape of eyes on one, on the right side and on the left side and the and the fangs in the front and the pope is sitting right there in the middle and this is the head of the serpent but many catholics still cannot see that this is a cult with a veneer of christianity and so pursuing god without the knowledge of god's word can be very dangerous it is. because you can be diverted into more so one of the more popular cults or an unpopular cult but if you pursue him outside of his word if you don't pay attention to the scripture to the daily to the details of the scriptures you can be easily very easily derailed i i noticed that in the roman catholic catechism you know that that catechism is the official statement of the roman catholic church they say that in their catechism they say that tradition is equal with scripture and that's very dangerous because yeshua said something that is very key he said you through your traditions have reduced to nothing the word of god or you make the word of god of none effect through traditions the word of god can be made of none effect now that's very powerful because if they say that tradition is equal with scripture they have raised the traditions of men and made them equal with the word of god now that's very dangerous there is nothing that should be equal with the word of god the catholic church places their traditions at an equal level of importance and significance with the scriptures and that's very that's very dangerous in catechism 80 on page 31 it says sacred tradition and sacred scripture then are bound closely together and communicate one with the other for both of them flowing out from the same divine wellspring come together in some fashion to form one thing and move towards the same goal each of them makes present and fruitful in the church the mystery of Christ who promised to remain with his own always to the close of the age so the catholic church raises traditions because they know that the word of god can be made of no effect through the traditions of men and jesus said it he said you through your traditions have made the word of god of no effect you know so the traditions of the catholics are like the repetition of praying to mary saying the hail mary 
Hail Mary, full of grace, etc., etc. Great is the fruit of your womb. And, and repeating this over and over and over again, as many beads as there are on the on the rosary, you you repeat the same prayer over and over and over again. And what have you what are you doing when you do that? You're meditating, number one. Remember, meditation is very powerful. You are meditating and you're programming your mind into a religion. And religion is very dangerous. You program your mind into religion, it will hold you bound. This is why it's very difficult for a Catholic to come out of Catholicism and be born again and be saved and be washed in the blood of Yeshua, be filled with the Spirit of God and join the family of God. It's, diff it's difficult for them to come out from that cult. So it's a miracle to see that you <laughs> that you came out. Let me tell yeah. you, it is a miracle. No matter how many scriptures you show them, they'll still they they'll claim that they do not worship Mary, yeah. but they are venerating Mary and they are adding her to the Godhead, which is blasphemous because the Bible says, "Here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. Is one God. He manifested Himself as Father." He has also manifested himself as son when he took on the form of a man mm -hmm. to save us from our sins, to be the propitiation for our sin. And he has manifested himself also as spirit. And, and that Holy Spirit is at work right now, reconciling the world unto God. So it is very, it is, it is very dangerous to add a person to the Godhead, the, uh, Mary, Mary, with and there's and yet Yeshua made no mention that Mary should be added to the Godhead. Yeah. <laughs> Mary did her duty producing the word of God in her life, just like you, just like me, just like Erica. Every one of us must produce the word of God in our lives. That does not add us to the Godhead. <laughs> so it's very dangerous to do so. In another catechism, Catechism 100, page 35. They say that the task of interpreting the word of God authentically has been entrusted solely to the magisterium of the church, that is, to the Pope and to the bishops in communion with him. Now, the magisterium is the teaching authority of the Roman Catholic Church, especially as exercised by bishops or the Pope. So they are saying that only the Pope and those whom the Pope has allowed has have the right to read the Bible and give its interpretation. <laughs> that means that you that's, that's as individuals will never read the Bible for yourselves. That's what she said. That yes. Those days a Catholic was not allowed to, to read a Bible. Yes. So that means they'll never grow in the knowledge of the word of God. And the Bible says, well, my people are destroyed for what? For lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge of what? First and foremost of his word. Because as soon as you read the word of God, you realize, oh, this queen of heaven is the same one they were worshiping in the Old Testament. And now the Roman Catholic Church has called her Mary. If you read the word of God, 1 Timothy 2.5, there is one God and one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Now, when you read that, that sets you free from praying to any other deity, especially one that cannot save like Mary. Mary cannot save. She cannot heal. She cannot deliver. She does not do any of that. No wonder after she had finished praying and a friend suggested that they go visit a, a witch doctor, it was very easy for her to switch mm -hmm. because it's the same, you know. So she had to, to go and then meet this person looking for a solution because even here she's looking for a solution and she's not seeming to find it. So somebody has come up with another plan. Yes. Another idea that you see? there is this place we can go and then you find your solution to your problem. Mm -hmm. So it's so sad even what she had to go through, uh, the, the sacrificing of chicken, the, the frogs. And you know witchcraft is so filthy. Yeah, it's We've been disgusting. telling people about uh, witchcraft, the spirit cooking where people eat poop. People <laughs> talking about eating poop. I saw one <laughs> eating poop. Here in Kenya, you know, it, it, think, it seems to be far. You know, when you're talking about these things, people think they are so far from us. They say, ah, those are, they, they, they saw the things that they saw, they are, they are far from us. But it's, it's, it's very close. People are doing all sorts of things to survive. 
they are they are willing to sell their souls a person the the people are eating poo they are drinking urine they are they are they are taking disgusting things they are drinking blood and all that in search of solutions to their problems to their needs they are ready to sell their souls to compromise their integrity for material things yeah. and yet at the end of the day all these things are vanity and we are leaving them nobody is going with them so, so yeah and then you know you i remember that adronia was a, a very staunch catholic yes complete and, with rosaries and, my dad and everything was also a catholic and my yet, mom was also a catholic yeah and before. my dad was a catholic also Wow. And I used to wonder what is the difference between Catholicism and being a Holy Ghost filled saved born again Christian. So it wasn't until I began to study that I realized that oh there is a definite difference between the two. Catholicism is filled it is filled with idolatry. I want you to look at Catechism 882 on page 254. It says the Pope, Bishop of Rome and Peter's successor <laughs> is the perpetual and visible source and foundation of the unity both of the bishops and of the whole company of the faithful for the roman pontiff by reason of his office as vicar of christ and we'll get to that <laughs> vicar of christ and as pastor of the entire church has full supreme and universal power over the whole church a power which he can always exercise unhindered now this person the pope and i don't want to call him pope because pope means papa or father mm -hmm. he's calling himself the vicar of christ instead meaning vicar from the word vicarious meaning instead of christ is him vicar means vicarious it's come from the word it comes from the word vicarious that means instead of christ it is him now this man has put himself in the position of christ as if he can save as if he can forgive sins as if he can redeem he has put himself in the position of a deity and that is idolatry that is a potent idolatry and if there is idolatry in you or in your parents then the curses of the bloodline will flow through from generation to generation to the third and fourth generation of them that hate me that's what the lord said so It's vicar literally means a substitute and he says that he's the bishop of the whole church <laughs> has full supreme universal power over the whole church nah he has power over the idolatrous church the pagan church mm -hmm. whereby a false trinity of father son and mary who are who have nothing to do with the godhead who have nothing to do with god and the body of christ they are completely different the jesus of the roman catholic church is completely different from the yeshua who gave his life for us and it should be well known that if you call yourself a catholic and you're practicing catholic you are not a christian you are not a follower of christ you are a follower of the pope who by definition has made himself both father and the replacement of Christ so you have become a follower of an idol whom yeshua never gave any authority over any man that pope has to repent of his sin and be born again just like anybody else so it is important that people know that the catechisms right there just they speak they speak and they 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 openly expose themselves just even from their own writings And in Colossians chapter 1 verse 18 in the amplified version the Bible says he speaking of Yeshua he is also the head the life source and leader of the body the church and he is the beginning the firstborn from the dead so that he himself will occupy the first place he will stand supreme and be preeminent in everything that is speaking of Christ Jesus Yeshua himself He did not allocate that authority to any other man. He himself has that authority. So for the Roman Catholic Church to claim that that power has been given to the Pope, that is idolatrous and it is blasphemous. And it is pure error. And it comes from the pit of hell. In Catechism 2177, it says the Sunday celebration of the Lord's Day and his Eucharist is at the heart of the church's life. They say Sunday is the day 
on which the Paschal mystery is celebrated in light of the apostolic tradition and is to be observed as the foremost holy day of obligation in the universal church. Also to be observed are the day of the nativity of our Lord Jesus Christ, the epiphany, the ascension of Christ, the feast of the body and the blood of Christ, the feast of Mary, the mother of God, her immaculate conception, her assumption, the feast of St. Joseph, the feast of the apostles St. Peter and Paul, and the feasts of all saints. Now, let me tell you, the Pascal Mystery, this is the definition of the Pascal Mystery in the glossary of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Christ's work of redemption accomplished principally by his passion, death, resurrection, and glorious ascension, whereby dying he destroyed our death, rising he restored our life. Right. Now, you see what they're saying, these are the traditions that they have. Sunday, they made Sunday a tradition that you have to attend church on Sunday. In fact, it is the Roman uh, Catholic pontiff, the Pope uh, Gregory, who created, who put forth the the modern calendar that we that we use today, and the names of the days were put forth by the Roman Catholic Church. And you remember how the names of the days are filled with gods and goddesses yes. that are not the god of heaven yeah. sunday was the day they worshiped the sun monday or the moon day was the day they worshiped the moon tiu's day was the day they worshiped tiu the goddess tiu the fertility god called tiu wednesday was woden's day woden the god or odin was another god that they worshiped thor's day or thursday was the god that they worshiped was a god that the day they worshiped the god thor and freya and Friday was Freya's day, Saturday, Saturn's day, the planet Saturn. They worship these gods. These this calendar came from the Roman Catholic Church, so it should be understood. And this was this was Pope Gregory. The, uh, the calendar we use today is called the Gregorian calendar, wow. af named after Pope Gregory. So, the Roman Catholic Church has done a lot of damage and has done a lot to program the world into idolatry. They have done a lot. They are behind the calendar. That means that we call the days, the days that we call, you won't see Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in the Bible. You'll never see that. You'll see the first day, the, the second, second day, day, the third day. Even the names of the months, January is named after Janus, which was a god. Yeah. <laughs> February was named after another god. Maya, is the, the month Gosh. of May is na named after Maya, a god. August is named after Caesar Augustus. <laughs> July is named after Julius Caesar. The gods of, uh, well, the Caesars of Rome. So you see, everything we have been programmed into Roman Catholicism, and Roman Catholicism has done a lot of damage. These traditions have been made equal, according to them, with the word of God. Yeah. So you see how they have done a lot to deceive, to derail, to fill our world with pagan idolatry that has its origin in Babylon. So to see you set free from that is not easy to come out from that. It's not easy. Once you are bound in that thing and you've been repeating the rosary for years, you've been programmed by it. For you to come out of that stronghold, it takes Christ. Yes. It takes Yeshua. And uh, <laughs> also she mentioned that they were okay with her getting pregnant but they were not okay with her giving her life to Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You see? And what is it about this Jesus? What is it about this Christ <laughs> that they have such a problem with him? Yes. <laughs> they hate. Satan wants to bind the whole world and keep them in the bondage of idolatry and false knowledge and, and religion. And religion is the worst kind of bondage because to get someone out... You literally have to untie them. It's, they're in chains of bond. Their mind is in chains of bondage. To get them free from it, you must untie them scripture after scripture after scripture until you loose their mind from the bondage of religion yeah. and idolatry. And it's very, it's not easy at all. But, yes. you know, people should notice how easy it is to go from Roman Catholicism directly into the shrine. Why? Because there's no difference. Your, even your grandmother was practiced was a was a complete sorcerer. She also used to cut people. 
Yeah. Yeah, she also cut me. I still have a scar she cut me. Yes. That protecting me from my enemies, but after there my enemies intensified. They <laughs> of increased course. the number. <laughs> of course. So I want to reach out to I also know. had the coronic headache that she was talking about. Yeah. I had it. And uh, every time my grandmother would initiate me it became worse. Mm-hmm. But whenever I would participate in witchcraft, sicknesses i was also anemic because demons like blood remember we always explain mm-hmm. when they enter somebody's uh, body mm-hmm. they are not good tenants they are disrespectful yes they, they enter they without will. your will your, without your permission yes. and then they want to take whatever treasure god has given you and you'll find that in many ladies they are anemic because that demon drinks their blood yeah, they have drinks. less and less blood yes. so it consumes their blood so yeah. You know, it should be very notable in any, and we're not here to uh, disrespect anybody who is a is a Roman Catholic. We're not here no, to do that at disrespect. all. In fact, we However, have many Catholic friends, and we pray yes, for them to. Yes, we, pr- we have very many Catholic friends, and we pray for them to give their lives to Jesus. And many have, and many yeah. have come out from um, Catholicism, and they stopped venerating mary and they just rely direct and they pray directly to the father in the name of yeshua and we like calling jesus name yeshua very often number one because that's his hebrew name but number two it distances us from the catholic jesus because they have their own jesus they have their own christ they have their own messiah and their messiah is coming and you'll see that when their messiah comes the pope will bow down before that messiah and the entire Catholic world will bow down before that Messiah. But that Messiah is the Antichrist that is coming. So it is very dangerous to follow the path of idolatry. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. And when he prayed the Lord's Prayer, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Nowhere in the Lord's Prayer did he, did he mention Mary. Or did he mention that any of the saints would be praying on your behalf? Or maybe he should have prayed through his mom. Yeah. And and furthermore, he never, he told us, when you pray, do not be like the pagans because they feel that they will be heard because of their repetitious um, speaking or their prayers that are just repeated prayers as if you're speaking to a robot. You're repeating the same thing. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail. You, why, are you, why are you talking to that way to your father? Who, who wants to be spoken to that way anyway? When I speak to you, do I speak to you like a robot and say, Hi, Erica, how are you? Hi, Erica, how are you? Hi, Erica, how are you? Yeah. It's very strange, you know? Mm. And what is the purpose of that? It is to indoctrinate the mind. If you it do is... that, I'll, I'll call a doctor immediately. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And yeah. yet there are, ve- there are millions, perhaps billions of Roman Catholics who speak that way and, they are, and they think that they're speaking to God repeating themselves over and over again. Yeshua said, when you speak, when you pray, do not be like the pagans because they think that they will be heard for repeating the same words over and over or that they will be heard for their much speaking. But when you pray, separate yourself, go into your closet and there kneel down before your father and there pray and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And he said, pray in my name that your joy may be full. And I and I would like to encourage any Catholic out there, pray to the Father, Abba Elohim, in the name oh, of Yeshua. Jesus. And when he answers the prayer, you will see that what we're telling you is yeah. very true. And then uh, she mentioned something that I felt I need to talk about. She mentioned that when they performed witchcraft to help her, uh, they, they were thinking that they are helping her. So when they wanted to relieve her from those demons that are tormenting, they, what happened is the demons came and they killed the goat. And they, they, they decided to slaughter it and there was no blood. Uh, I've been explaining to you how those people sacrifice in the occult. Hmm. How you know that a demon has consumed something, you just see the bones. Sometimes you just see something without blood they have taken all the blood they have accepted the sacrifice so she was supposed to die but they had to sacrifice this goat and the goat died instead but because it 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 was a, a 
dedicated God, it was sacrificed. Mm -hmm. There was no blood when they slaughtered it. But wow. again, her situation did not improve. improve. It just it got worse. Mm -hmm. So she did not die, but she was in pain. So uh, many people ignore the spiritual things. They don't want to listen to, to people who talk about spiritual things. They say those ones are extremists. They, they are fear mongers. They do <laughs> this and that. But you need to know that life is spiritual. Mm -hmm. And you need to know how to engage in spiritual warfare. You need to know how to deal with the challenges of life. Because if you don't, you can easily become a victim of, of the enemy. And the enemy drives on people's ignorance. That's why the Bible says that my people perish due to lack of knowledge. And that's where the enemy wants to keep us. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want us to research. He doesn't want us to read the Bible. He doesn't want us to listen to ministers of God. He doesn't, he, he doesn't, he just wants to occupy you with other things. Work, wake up with a very tight work schedule. Uh, he, he, he wants to occupy you with visiting your friends, going out for parties and all that. You avail time for all that. But when it comes to you, reading the word of God and praying and, and also learning and making research on spiritual matters, he will make you so busy for that because when you're ignorant, it's very easy for him to victimize you, but you don't need to be there. The Bible says that you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Yes, and in the days of Babylon, when this idolatry all started, you always saw Semiramis and Tammuz, mother and child. In Egypt, you saw the same thing, Isis and Horus, mother and child. And now you come to the Roman Catholic Church and you see the same statues, you see the same abominations, Mary and supposedly Jesus, mother and child. It is the same idolatry from year to year. And the reason why we expose the evil of this world, because Yeshua said in John chapter 7, verse 7, the world cannot hate you, but me it hates, because I testify of it that the works thereof are evil. We expose cults, witchcraft, sorcery, wherever it rears up its ugly head, because Yeshua does the same thing. He testifies of them that the works thereof are evil. So as we are testifying of those works, we are doing what our master told us to do. He does it and we do the same thing. And, and we sh and any church you, sh you attend, they should be doing that too because this is what Jesus does. Mm -hmm. This is what Yeshua is doing. And then also, Jesus loved the sinners, but he hated the sin. Yes. So when we are talking about the sin, don't, don't uh, misunderstand us. We don't hate any Muslim. We don't hate any Catholic. Right. We don't hate the prostitutes. We don't hate them. But we hate the sin because that sin is harmful to them. It's harmful to us. It's harmful to sin is harmful to humanity. So mm -hmm. what we do is to expose it mm -hmm. and set people free that even when the sinner is watching, the sinner will, will get knowledge and understanding of who God is and what he desires for their lives. And they can be liberated. And that's the reason as to why after every video we upload, we lead you to Christ. We give you an opportunity to accept Jesus and, and, and you know, and be free from the enemy. Because at the end of the day, Satan is our enemy. Amen. Now in Exodus chapter 20, the word of God says, And God spake all these words, saying, from verse 1, I am the Lord your God, which has brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. Look at this specific instruction. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers, upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Keep the commandments of God. When you see a statue, you see people bowing before that statue, that's called idolatry. And God warned us not to do that. 
As soon as you are doing that, you are violating his commandments. You have become a pagan. And that warning you of this is not in hatred. That's love. If a house is burning and I tell you, my friend, this house is burning, let's get out. That's not hatred. <laughs> That's love. You understand? So it's important that you know that. Um, it's critical that you understand that idolatry brings curses upon the life of any bloodline. So her father was a practicing Catholic, but still visiting shrines. That covenant of idolatry brings curses through the bloodline. Now, if your parents or grandparents or great-grandparents, you don't know what they were doing three and four generations before you were born, but you know that you are of that bloodline. My friend, you need to go to Leviticus chapter 26 and see the direct instructions that God gives in the 40th verse. He says, If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember, and I will remember the land." meaning that he will heal the land, he will remember his covenant of blessing that he had with Abraham. You must repent for the sins of your fathers. You must do it. In 1 John 1, 1.9 it says, if we, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So any believer out there, if your parents ever practiced any kind of Catholicism, whether it's Buddhism, whatever religion they were in, whatever idolatry they practiced, repent for that sin. Going three and four generations back, in fact, going all the way back to Adam. Plead the blood of Yeshua, blot out, ask God to blot out the transgression and forgive you and to destroy the covenants that they entered into because those covenants have a legal right to follow you through the generations, follow your children. People suffer from sicknesses and diseases and yet they're saved. But there are curses, there are covenants that must be dealt with. Yeshua gave us the right to deal with them. He gave us the legal right to stand upon. We have the, we have the legal right right he says the he says that that the law of sin and death has been has he's given us a new law the law of the spirit of life has set us free from the law of sin and death but you must apply that law you can it, it's not just automatic you repent you give you're given the opportunity now to repent he's, the word says that who whosoever believed him to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. So now you have the power in the name of Yeshua. You can repent for your sins and those of your ancestors going all the way back to Adam. You can speak to those altars and silence them. You can bind the familiar spirits involved. You can ask God to break those covenants and fast and pray until those covenants are broken and then begin to live by God's word. And I'm telling you, you can flourish in this life. God expects us to live as kings and priests. That's what it says in, in Revelation chapter 1. He said he has made us kings and, and priests, priests unto God. So that's what we're supposed to live as on the earth. Kings and priests. So if your life is not producing king and priest, there's something wrong. Yeah. You need to go back and check. Do the checklist. Make sure that you have checked off everything required. And then begin to live by every word of God, and you will see your life flourishing. The Bible says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. So good success exists in the kingdom of God. It exists. But you must meditate therein day and night. Night, night until you become one with the word and then these things begin to find expression in your life and i'm telling you your life can change you are meant to be an example to the world the whole world is under oppression mm -hmm. but when you are not oppressed 
and you're free and you're walking in that glorious liberty, people will look at your life and say, hey, how are you doing this? That's your opportunity to say this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. <laughs> you understand? It looks just, it just, it's so easy to not do it. He says, thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That means every day that passes that you have not meditated in God's word, you have failed to fulfill the prescription. If you get sick and you go to the hospital, he says, take this medication, take one in the morning, take another in the evening. If you only take one in the morning, what will happen? <laughs> you, you will not get better. But God has given us a prescription here. He says, thou shalt meditate therein day and that's a minimum of at least twice a day where you are giving time to God's word and you're meditating on a specific scripture, committing it to memory so that it may enter into your heart and germinate like a tree and grow and find expression in your life. But if you don't do that, then the symptoms will persist. <laughs> yeah. So... God's, and this is the key to the kingdom. This is the center of the kingdom. This is how the kingdom of God works. That the seed of his word is placed in your heart. And then it begins to find expression in your life. And that is the abundant life that Yeshua was talking about. He said, I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Yeah, there is something that I really uh, have to ask Mama talk about. She mentioned uh, something to do with bitterness and unforgiveness. Yeah. And many people, even me, any, everybody has been hurt and wronged by somebody at, at one point in life. And uh, it's very difficult for many people to forgive mm -hmm. and, and also to heal. It's, it's difficult. That's a, one time we were talking about this topic and a man who was hurt by a girlfriend who dumped her after spending all his who dumped him after spending all his money started <laughs> punching the neighbors he was he was so bitter you know mm -hmm. this is the time when he needed her when things had gone down mm -hmm. and now the, the lady let him down he had invested everything gifted him with those expensive gifted her with those expensive gifts taken her out and, mm -hmm. and educated her and now when his businesses were down when he needed her to also so come in and support she mm -hmm. dumped him oh. uh, and we've had worse situations where people are going through pain in turn they are bleeding internally because of people so what advice would you give such a person i know they are watching and there are very many and they have sworn mm -hmm. never to forgive i will never forgive that person that's what they say so I believe one word of, you know, when I sit with these mamas, I don't want to let them go because they are knowledgeable. They are, they are, God has given them a certain level of understanding and experience and they can help. So mama, what advice? Okay. Forgiveness first is a process, but once you don't go forgive, you bind yourself, mm. you tie yourself like in chains. Mm -hmm. Also, another one is tied. But once you forgive, you are set free. Mm -hmm. And also, the other one can be set free. Mm -hmm. Also, it is a key to healing. Because once you are not healed, the things come back. But he did like this. And when you keep on that, that's why so many people have been killing their friends, mm. doing so many bad things because they are not yet healed. And it remains there. That unforgiveness is a satanic way. Yeah. Mm. That's what I can talk. Mm. Because you cannot have a breakthrough. It's like... Um, Driving, you drive and drive. When you come to something, which stamps so like something, you just stop automatically. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't enable you to go through or to pursue like something good. That's why Christ came to the cross. He's really a good example. He came, he left everything. But while on the cross, he was abused. 
but was I think even those he healed did the same. But he said, forgive, because I forgive them. Father, forgive them, because they are doing what they, they, don't, know. they don't know. So, it is Satan who ties someone. And in like when we are teaching children, we teach like someone being bound and someone being sent free. So, once we forgive, our lives begin clean. Unforgiveness is something like which comes into your life and the endangers or destroys everything because that's how you get anger, that's how you get bitterness. So, but once you forgive, you feel the peace of God, you feel freedom, and once you look, you, you reach your neighbor. He can refuse to greet you, but you are free to greet him, even to give him some things. So, nothing is impossible with God. God can help you. Amen. He can give you his spirit, and you'll be able, once and everything can break. And when it breaks, you'll be free, and free indeed. indeed. Amen. And God can help you. Yeah. Tim, you need to lead them to Amen. Jesus. Amen. So if you would like to give your life to Christ, please just pray this prayer after me. And I know that the same Yeshua who set us free can set you free too. Say, Father, in the name of Yeshua. Father, in the name of Yeshua. I have heard your word. I have heard your word. I believe your son came down to earth. I believe your son came down to earth. And gave his life for me. And, and gave, gave his, his life, life for me. And you raised him up on the third day. And he raised him up on the third day. From the dead. From the dead. And now he has ascended. And now he has ascended. He is at the right hand of power. He is at the right hand of power. Please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. Forgive me of my idolatry. Forgive me of my idolatry. Forgive even my ancestors on both sides. Forgive even my ancestors on both sides of all of their idolatry. Of all their idolatry. Going all the way back to Adam. Going all the way back to Adam. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. And cleanse my bloodline. And cleanse my bloodline. And silence the altars. And silence the altars. And break the covenants. And break the covenants that we had entered into. That we had entered into. Make me a new creature. Make me a new creature. In the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. Show me a place. Show me a place. Where I can be baptized. Where I can be baptized. Where I can learn your word. Where I can learn your word. And have good Christian friends. And have good Christian friends. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. That I may be filled. That I be filled. With fire. With fire. In Yeshua's name. In Yeshua's name. I pray. I pray. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are born again. You are saved. Look for a Bible-believing church. Get Christian friends. Be baptized. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you, this is the beginning of your winning life. Yes. Amen. Uh, personally, her testimony has blessed me. And because it has blessed me, I also, as life is spiritual, we also want to be a blessing to her. Yes, we have a small gift for you, Mama, before we conclude. Yeah, and we pray that this is not the last time you come. Every time you come to Kenya, Mama is traveling to Uganda, and uh, we'll miss her. I don't even want to think about it because I'll cry on the show. We'll miss her, but we are together. She's going to minister. She has a wonderful family in Uganda. Please send our love and greetings to those people in Uganda. Tell them we love them. Here is a t-shirt for you. Because life is, life is spiritual. spiritual. Amen. Yes. That is real. And, and a hoodie. And a hoodie. Amen. Just a small token. <laughs> yes. Amen. Yeah, thank you so much. Amen. 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 May God bless you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your heart. Yeah. Amen. 
yes family we love you but jesus loves you more i remain erica mukisakimani aka mama maisha oh mami zion and zef and i'm baba zion now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise god our savior be glory and honor and majesty and power from now henceforth and forever Amen. Amen. Erica, part 5, Altars and Covenants. Breaking generational curses and destroying the power of witchcraft. This is the fifth installment of the Erica Testimonial book series. Erica reveals how the enemy takes advantage of altars and covenants. Details of how these covenants affected her and her family and how she and her family were totally set free by the power of Jesus. Get your copy of Altars and Covenants now. Visit lifeisspiritual.org.